Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering draft video. In this week's video, we're going to be navigating through a Strixhaven draft from start to finish. If you've been following this channel for the past few weeks, you'll have seen my general pick order for Strixhaven, as well as my guides for the two major pillar archetypes of the format, which I consider to be blue-based value and white-based aggro. As always, please click like and subscribe if you find these videos helpful. It does help the channel a huge amount. You can catch me streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash alromusic, and you can join the Discord, which will be linked in the description below, if you'd like to reach out to me and get some feedback on your drafts or ask for any advice or just say hi. The general pick order that we'll be following, just as a refresher, is number one, a great rare. Number two, one of the best uncommons in the set, being Igneous Inspiration, Professor of Symbology, Divide by Zero, and Academic Dispute, which are all super flexible, board affecting, cheap learn spells, and they're all very good and should be taken very highly. Number three is the first copy of Environmental Sciences. Number four is a good summoning lesson, being Elemental, Fractal, or Inkling Summoning. And then number five is the uh, good uncommons in the various colleges that we'll be looking to draft. And then by the end of pack one, we're going to be looking to be either base blue and going in that direction or base white. And we'll have an idea, hopefully, by the end of that first pack of which college is going to be most open as well. And then we'll be drafting towards that for the rest of the draft. Let's get to the draft. Alrighty, here we are. Uh, pick one, pack one. We'll have a look at the rare. This is a nice, flexible rare. A uh, woman flying vigilance that uh, starts pumping your team or uh, the four mana four four uh, that can sort of shoot things for uh, for two damage if they're a certain size. So I do like that. It's a pretty flexible rare, and I think we'll start with it here. Um, no uh, excellent lessons in this pack or excellent uncommons. Uh, being Igneous Inspiration, etc. Emergent Sequence is quite good, uh, but green is generally not a color I want to start in. I'd rather start in blue and then become Quandrix or Prismari rather than starting green and then pivoting between Quandrix and Witherbloom. So um, we're going to grab Shale or Shaley or Shile, Dean of Radiance here, and maybe, uh, maybe end up drafting Black White. We will see what comes to us. Okay, pick two. Again, look at the rares. Lorehold Command. Excellent excellent rare. This is one that we're happy to splash uh, off of Prismari, blue-red, or off of a uh, black-white aggro deck. So we're going to be picking this up here. Uh, again, no great uncommons in the pack. There uh, are no great lessons either. Spirit Summoning, not really that good. So uh, happy to pick up Lore Hold Command here as our pick two. Went into pick three. Looking at the rares, Growth Spiral, not super exciting. No top uncommons in the pack. We do have a really nice lesson in the pack, which is Fractal Summoning. May not look like this goes with our first two picks, and it doesn't exactly, but if we're thinking about Lorehold Command as a splash off of Prismari, Fractal Summoning being an X blue blue card is actually really, really good in Prismari as just a, just a blue card. And um, we want to stay flexible early. We want to find out what's being passed to us. We want to find our lane. So we're going to go with Fractal Summoning. It has a very high chance of making our deck and uh, we don't want to commit too early to any particular archetype. We want to see what's getting passed to us. All right, now pick number four, Culmination of Studies, not a uh, super strong rare, so we're not going to look to that. Our uncommons are also not super strong. Uh, Shadewing Laureate's pretty good in the black-white deck. I might prefer to have Spectre of the Fens, honestly, uh, and that might be the card that we're taking here. No good lessons. Uh, no great uh, college uncommons. Hmm, it's kind of tough. Uh, if we wanted to lean towards some kind of like blue-green deck, I could see taking Scurried Colony, but we're a little bit far away from doing that. So I think we'll take Spectre as the sort of best card in the pack, uh, probably full stop, and certainly the best card in the pack for black-white aggro. So let's take it here and see what happens. All right, pick five. We're starting to look at signals here. Uh, Snow Day is a pretty strong blue signal, so I'm pretty happy to pick that up here. Again, no great lessons to take, uh, no top uncommons, uh, you know, in terms of the, the learn uncommons, but Snow Day is certainly a, a strong card in any of the blue decks, so I think we're going to take that here 
and look to draft a blue based deck. And still looking at signals that we're seeing, there's an environmental sciences in this pack, which we're going to take pretty much no matter what, but I think it's worth noting that there's a green rare in this pack. It's not particularly good, but could indicate that people aren't drafting green. There's a Scurred Colony, which is a good green card. There's also a Silver Quill Pledge Mage, which is an excellent Silver Quill card, and is probably the best card in this pack in terms of um, power level. We don't know if we're going to be a blue deck or a white deck yet, uh, so I'm going to take the Sciences to stay flexible, but um, th there's a couple of things to note in this pack. One being that Silver Quill Pledge Mage is here, and the other that there's a couple good green cards in, in here, so we'll see what we what we see and uh, try to draw some conclusions. Okay, so uh, Witherbloom Apprentice, certainly a signal that Witherbloom is open, not a college that I'm very interested in drafting, but uh, that's worth taking note of. And the Inkling Summoning pick seven here, if we think about our pick order being rares, good uncommons, uh, environmental science, and then the good lessons, this is, you know, going above any of uh, the cards like this one. Uh, that are the top college in comments. So we're going to take this anyways if we're following our pick order. And I think it's a great signal to us in pick seven that uh, that white is flowing to us. So let's take it. There's really nothing else in this pack that's uh, worth looking at. And continuing to see white and black. Uh, these are the cards that nobody else at the table wanted at pick eight. This is uh, we're, we're the last person to see this pack. Nothing super, super strong, but kind of encouraging that agonizing remorse is here uh there's a brackish trudge which is not really what you're looking for in white black but um is somewhat encouraging i think we'll take agonizing remorse it's not uh anywhere as good as humiliate but i think it's still pretty powerful uh and we'll take it here and i guess we're thinking that we're white black at this point um and yeah not seeing any blue so i think we can start to think that blue is is not really where we're supposed to be not really seeing much green um, but we are still seeing black and white cards that are playable i'm going to take the pledge mage here over beaming defiance it's because it's important to have good creatures on curve and uh, there's a lot of combat tricks in the format so we don't need to take this quite as highly plus this does open us up to playing red white if if that's what it comes to and pick 10 another signal for us here alan shield mage as a pretty good top end for the black white deck i do like test of talents in our blue decks but i just don't think that we have the the uh the concentration of cards to really play it at this point and we just really haven't seen any good blue other than this snow day so i think i'm going to stick with the signals that we've been seeing uh being the white based signals and we'll take that here uh all right and more white signals uh, essence infusion is not a great card but it certainly can be played in the white black deck I think we'll take the Beaming Defiance here as a good combat trick. Relic Sloth, also solid, but not really something that you're actively looking to to play. And, you know, Red White, not the best archetype either. Okay, so Access Tunnel could be pretty good. Could give us the last couple of points of damage. Um, Duress, not really that great. We already have Agonizing Remorse. So I think I'm going to take the Tunnel here over Defend the Campus, which is pretty pretty low impact removal and you can just get it later as we're seeing here uh and i think we'll take it here over the sloth not certain that we want to be red white so i'm gonna going to uh stay white and wow do we get paid off silver quill pledge mage one of the top uh role player comments for this deck so we we're really thinking that uh, black white is not being drafted at this table so we're going to be uh, focusing the rest of our draft towards drafting black white where possible uh, Strict Proctor, not really a great rare for us, but uh, Humiliate's an excellent uh, uncommon for black-white, so we'll take that here and be pretty happy about it. Um, heated Debate if we wanted to go towards red, but but uh, but like I said, I think we want to be black-white. Rise of Extus, also very, very good. So um, maybe we'll get back the Rise or the Rescuer. Necrotic Fumes won't be at its best in this deck, but um, we can keep a, keep an eye out for it as well. So I'm going to put the blue cards into the sideboard. Um, since we're we're pretty pretty firmly not playing blue in my opinion, um, but we'll keep in mind that we do have this environmental sciences. So splashing Lorehold command is very realistic. Looking at our rare here, Biblioplex could be okay, but uh, it's a bit slow. 
And I think we really would prefer to have the learn power of study break now that we've um, sort of decided that we're, we're black, white. We'll keep our lessons organized over here. Science is inkling summoning at the moment. We would like to pick up some more, uh, but we also need some learn. So uh, we need it all right now. We'll take the learn card. And uh, Divine Gambit, not bad. A lot of the creatures come in spell form, so this card is often uh, going to get something and the opponent won't be able to uh, do anything about it in terms of putting a permanent into play. So I think we'll take that here. Uh, Reconstruct History is not bad, but I uh, definitely don't think it's as good as Divine Gambit, and there's really nothing else to speak of in this pack. So Divine Gambit it is. Pack two, pick four. Real nice combat professor in this pack for us. We'll happily take that. This is the uh, the the best white common in my opinion, and we're happy to see it here. Specter of the Fens also in the pack. Maybe that'll come back to us on the wheel or the the warden. Um, so really, really happy to see this card here. We'll take it. And boy, this is pretty nice. Professor of symbology. So pretty clear that there's really nobody drafting white or white black or maybe there's only one other person there on the opposite side of the table because uh, this is one of the best cards in the set uh kind of full stop so we're going to take that here guiding voice also pretty nice we would love that uh wheeling the shield mage would be good even the professor's warning would be nice to come to see come back so there's a lot of depth in this pack for us and we're happily taking the professor here okay devastating mastery is not a card i'm very interested in with a deck like this uh, I think we're looking at um, not Quintorius, unfortunately, as, as much as I would like this card to be good. It's just really not. I think we're looking at Star Pupil as a one drop or Arrogant Poet as a two drop. And I just have not found Star Pupil to be really any good at all. But Flying, on the other hand, has been quite strong. So we're going to take the Poet here. Uh, we need always need good two drop creatures and especially ones that, uh, that have Flying. Uh, on pick seven here, village rights, uh, probably not what we're looking to do. We'd like our creatures to stay in play and kill our opponent, but uh, could be a card that we could end up playing. Stone Rice Spirit as a flyer, not the worst. Could jump something a little bit later, uh, push some damage for us. And we've also got Hunt for Specimens and Essence Infusion. So a bunch of kind of medium cards. I think I'm going to take the Hunt for Specimens as Learn is still quite valuable. Uh, and we're hoping to pick up a couple more lessons, but just even being able to go, you know, hunt into Igling Summoning is, is a pretty decent uh, little one-two punch. It's obviously not the best thing in the world, but... Um, and, uh, yeah, here we'll take Rise of Extus. Again, Learn being really good, and uh, Unconditional Removal at Exiles being really good. Wouldn't mind another Pledge Mage, but uh, we'd much prefer the, uh, the Silver Gold Pledge Mage uh, if we had the choice. Okay, wow, so another Rise comes back, so... So pretty clearly nobody drafting white at this table. So we're going to choose cards that we need for our deck, and that's kind of going to be it. So do we want Strict Proctor over Rise? Um, well, the bots think we do. I think we want Rise. I could see it being kind of close. The second Rise, not as good as the first. But uh, but I think, uh, I, I think the 1-3 Flyer is not quite that good but that could be wrong i mean we could end up with some anatomies or, or guiding voices if we had a couple guiding voice I, I might change my tune there but we don't yet so um okay so biblioplex or silver quill campus i think we'll take the land we'll just make sure we have good mana and uh let's take a relic sloth on the splash probably won't need it but maybe we will specter of the fens excellent common creature for us Shield Mage came back, and Warning came back. Let's check our creature count. Nine. Oh, I think we want the Shield Mage a little bit more. That's tough, though. The, the Warning is pretty nice to have. All right, we'll take Beaming Defiance. Uh, we already have one. Beaming Defiance is pretty good, though. Star people pretty bad. So, yeah, we'll take it. And Stormer Spirit. So, we're pretty clearly the only person in this, in this archetype. So, this is somewhat lucky, but also we identified it as being open in pack one, and, and we're getting paid off for that. And pretty nice to, to see a rare here as well, Silver Quill Command. Um, so we'll snap that up. And keep in mind of what's in this pack. We need more lessons. Pest Summoning is not really what we want, but maybe it will wheel. And if it does, we can capitalize on that. Rise, we probably don't need a, a third copy of. So we'll probably be looking to take um, the uh, Summoning out of that pack if it does come back. And wow, uh, yeah, Sparring Regimen, excellent learning card, one of the best rares in the set. Uh, really going to reward us to have more low drop creatures. Right now we've got Shale, Professor, Spirit, 
poet uh, hunt. So only five, and not all of them are great. So any two-drop creature we see at this point that's good, we're really going to be interested in taking, even if it's not that good, to be honest, because Regimen's really going to give us uh, a lot of value for having early plays. So this deck is shaping up to be pretty powerful. We'll see what we can... Uh, See what we can snag here in the rest of the draft. Okay, so we got another Spectre of the Fens, and kind of that's it. Don't need another Rise. Don't really want a, a Make Your Mark. Um, we're a bit four drop heavy, but I think we could take it here. Environmental Sciences we already have. Uh, do we want anything on the Splash? No. So yeah, we'll take take Spectre here, but uh, would prefer to see two drops. Two drops are just so hard to come by in this format. Um, and I'm probably not even prioritizing them as highly as I should be. Uh, you really, really want to be taking those. So we're pretty far ahead on playables at the moment. I'm going to move Defend the Campus to the board. I don't think we're going to end up needing it. Uh, all right. Study Break's a nice one. Intro to Prophecy is a nice one as well, just because we don't have much to get in the way of lessons. And we do have a fair amount of learn. We've got the Prof. We've got a Study Break already. We've got a Hunt. We've got a sparring regiment. We've got two regiment, I should say. We've got two Rise of Exodus. So this is kind of tough because Study Break is such an excellent card. But if we don't have anything to get, then it does get significantly worse. So I think I'm going to take the Intro to Prophecy here. This might be a little bit controversial, but I just feel like we have so much learn. We need targets to, to go get. Of course, immediately after that, we see uh, Inkling Summoning. Uh, so Punished, of course. Um... And I think we'll take it here over the Pledge Mage. Again, we've got some good early learn. We want to be able to grab stuff. Um, kind of a close pick. Hopefully we'll wheel uh, Apprentice or Pledge Mage or maybe even D-Spark. But uh, I think the most important card for us here is Inkling Summoning. Uh, Leech Fanatic even coming back would be good for us. We're going to need two drops pretty badly. Uh, speaking of two drops, a bad one here in Stone Rise Spirit. But uh, probably worth taking with Sparring Regimen. Sparring Regimen does work with Star Pupil. I will... I will admit that, but it also works with Stone Rise Spirit. Putting counters on this is pretty good, so I, I think I'm just going to take the uh, the Spirit. And we'll take Arrogant Poet here. Quite happy to see that. Maybe we won't have to play all these Spirits after all. Oh boy, and a Study Break. Pretty happy to see that. Pretty happy to see Leech Fanatic. So seeing Leech Fanatic pick 8 leads me to believe we'll wheel the other one. Uh, I'm going to take the Learn Spell here. Uh, there's also Lash of Malice, which we might be in a spot where we need I mean we don't have any early removal we may not need it um, does this kill something not really but I think study break is powerful enough that we just take it there uh, take essence infusion probably we won't probably won't end up playing it and here we can take lumamancer probably won't end up playing it take a make your mark again we're pretty good on playables so we're really just looking for for early creatures um, and Plum the Forbidden does not really fit with what we're doing I'm going to take um, Expel, I don't think the uh, Familiar is good enough, Wheeling the Apprentice is quite nice, we are quite happy about that and the Star Pupil comes back I mean we'll take it over Crushing Disappointment We'll have to see what our deck looks like. It certainly could be good. All right, here's the build I ended up going with. We've got uh, six good two-drop creatures in uh, Professor, Shale, two Poets, a Hunt for Specimens, and a Silver Quill Apprentice. I ended up cutting the Stone Rise Spirits, as I just don't feel they quite uh, stack up with the rest of the deck. Uh, but we can see how the deck performs. Maybe we do feel like we need a couple of extra two-drops. Wanted to make sure I kept all the learn cards in because we do have uh, some lessons that we want to get. Uh, cut one Spectre of the Fens for curve purposes. And uh, we cut... What else? Cut one copy of Beaming Defiance so just because I don't feel like we need uh, you know, that many combat tricks. And also cut uh, Agonizing Remorse as we have um, Humiliate in the deck already, which is a much, much better effect. Um, the 1-1 one -one counter just really makes it tick. Uh, in terms of our mana base, we're playing 17 lands, uh, uh, 9 white sources, 8 black sources, the dual land, which feels quite good, and then the single mountain to splash the Lorehold command, which I believe is worth it, um, since, 
you know, it's a very, very powerful car. We've got sciences. We've got lots of ways to find sciences, so we should be able to grab that mountain quite easily. And I cut the access tunnel because I think our deck has enough power. We were able to snap up some really good rares, uh, so I don't think we're going to need this for the end game. and uh, I don't want to have hands where we can't cast our spells. So that's the deck. We'll see you for round one. All right, we're on the play. We uh, have a two-drop we can cast, so I like this hand. We'll keep it. And uh, we'll be getting uh, Inkling Summoning, most likely, off of this Hunt for Specimens. And going from there. Okay, our opponent took a mulligan. We'll play a plane, say go. Opponent will do the same. All right, we could play Shale here. We could also play Hunt for uh, Specimens and grab... Hmm. And grab... Uh, environmental sciences to make sure we hit our land drops because we, we do want to get to these rises eventually. Uh, if we were to play shale first, that would let us play hunt next turn, pump it up, which is pretty nice. And then, you know, every creature beyond that, I mean, if we just do draw planes naturally, we get to play pledge range, put a counter on it. I do kind of like the idea of every one of our creatures being a little bit bigger. So let's go for that. It's a tiny little bit risky as we would you know, prefer to hit a land drop here, but if we don't, we've got Hunt. Uh, opponent's got Shock anyway, so that's that's a little unfortunate, but uh, that is the way it goes sometimes. All right. Uh, so Hunt definitely getting Sciences here. Maybe we hit our, our next land off the top, which would be great, but uh, if we don't, then we've got a way to do that. So a little bit of a slow start for us, but, um, you know. Okay, so we hit that land, but we can't cast the Pledge Mage off of it. No. So, um, that's okay. Let's play Sciences. We'll grab... I guess we'll grab a red mana, as that will let us cast Pledge Mage and uh, our, our Lorehold Command, should we end up uh, drawing it at some point. We'll attack 4-1. Uh, no, nah, we'll let them... We'll let them have the spell to, to attack us. Maybe they don't. Uh, otherwise, we're just giving them a free attack for 3. Likely that they do, but... Okay, so they don't, so that saves us three damage, which is quite nice. So we're falling a little bit behind here. A little bit concerning. Uh, we can play Pledge Mage, which blocks their Pledge Mage quite nicely. We could play Spectre, which uses our mana the best. We could Study Break them and grab Inkling Summoning, which is just okay. A um, little bit concerned about that 4-3, uh, that I'm not going to lie. Uh... But I think we just get our, four, our our flyer into play. Take a hit for four next turn. Uh, if we draw planes, we can go Pledge Mage plus Study Break next turn, which will be quite nice. Uh, so I think this makes us a, a, you know as flexible as we can be a, in the future turns by spending all of our mana now. If we play Pledge Mage, um, it wastes a mana. They could have a spell and jump their Pledge Mage, and then we don't have good blocks. Um, and if we play Study Break, we waste two mana. We find, you know, an Inkling Summoning or whatever, but that doesn't really get us anywhere. So um, I think this is where we want to be. They're coming in with their Pledge Mage. We'll try to make this block happen. They probably have a combat trick, but I'm okay with losing a Pest. Okay, apparently they do not have a combat trick. Um, maybe they've got a way to get it back. I'm assuming they've got the Pilgrim, uh, the 2-2 Flying Pilgrim. That gets it back. Guiding voice on Blood Age General. Okay. So really hoping to see a planes here. Lucky that we do. We'll play the Pledge Mage and attack for two in the sky. So they're going to go Anatomy. Uh, and we can think about trying to eat their Blood Age General with uh, or their Fuming Effigy with Study Break. Because, you know, but that would involve us taking a hit for six, which is a little bit troubling. Okay, they're going a different route here with the heated debate. That's fine. Let's see if they go to combat. We'll tap both their creatures. And see what we want to grab. We don't have an anatomy, unfortunately. We do have double inkling summoning, so I guess we'll just get one of those. And next turn, continue to draw lands, which is good for us. We can rise and I guess start attacking them. 
it's funny because we would like to rise the thing that they put anatomy on, but of course we, we get to do that anyways because um, we have a second copy. So I think it's fine to just do this here. Hopefully they don't have... Um, Hopefully they do not have beaming defiance here. That would be quite quite bad for us. Okay, they don't. We'll grab another summoning and uh, swing for two. So what I'm assuming is going to happen now is they're going to they're going to play anatomy on the general. We're going to be able to get that with rise. And they didn't have a trick last turn, so I don't expect that they'll have one this turn. And then from there we can try to just grind them out with specter. Um, if they have another big threat, then you know, we, we're going to be a little bit sad that we, uh, actually, I'm going to get their, their anatomy out of their graveyard. That's a little bit more concerning. Yeah. Okay, they're going to activate their general for no effect, and those go away. We get our prophecy. So we're fairly well set up here. I mean, if they've got a bomb mythic rare, then uh, we could be in trouble. But we're going to have a couple creatures and some card advantage to go forward. So I like our spot here. All right, and we draw a rare of our own here. Three damage chain target, target player gains three. And then we can make a 3 2 spirit. I wonder if we want to hold this. I think we do. I think we do because we could. I, mean, I guess we could use it as, as a trick. We could kill something more problematic than this thing. I think we're I think we're gonna hold it. It might give us lethal next turn as well with the plus one plus zero with all these flyers in play. So we'll hold it for a turn, and we'll do that math plus one plus zero. So that's nine plus the three that it deals to any target. So that would actually be exactly twelve. So lucky, lucky the math works out. But I think that's the correct way to do it either way. This two two is not doing much, but something like this. Is, is a lot scarier. So, the cool thing about this card is the plus one plus zero indestructible is gonna take care of their past caller, so we don't actually need to hit it for three. Um, uh, or, I guess we do this, and this, this kills them because they get haste, right? Gives haste, yes. Oh, that's pretty sweet. So, pretty lucky. Creatures you control gain indestructible and haste. Free damage. Target player gains three life. Yes, me. And there you go. So, lore hold command. Pretty worth it on the splash there. We'll take that and see you for the next one. Welcome back to round two. Opponents on the play. We've got a two drop and three drop and four drop. So we're quite happy with this hand. We'll keep it. And away we go. And we've even got some late game removal, which is pretty nice. All right. We won't start with Humiliate. We would like to have a creature to uh, to buff with it. So, But we'll, we'll probably... Probably won't run this out until um, we've played a, a handful of creatures here, but we'll see. I mean, our mana, if we don't draw a land next turn, we may have to just fire it off. But hopefully we draw a land and we can play combat for Professor and develop our board a bit before we, before we have to use it. And our opponent plays a Master Symmetrist. That's pretty scary. Okay, well, we'll humiliate them. We'll put the counter on... Hmm. That's tough. Pledge Mage, I think. Give it lifelink. Swing in with both. Um, that way it negates their next attack with the Symmetrist. And, I mean, we'll th I wonder if we, we won't get to uh, choose before we see their hand, unfortunately. Um, but I think it's correct to give it lifelink. And let's have a look at what they've got going on. They got Barian Books, another Frost Trickster, and a Scurried Colony. So not like super scary cards. Good tempo hand. Trickster's gonna gonna help them for sure. Um, I think we just take Barian Books here. 
They get to go Scourge Colony Trickster next turn, tapping down any blockers that we have, so we're definitely not trying to block anything. Um, but we do need to hit some land drops at some point to deal with this Symmetrist. Or we take the Trickster, put the counter, but then they just go Berry, so I think, we, yeah, I think we just take the Berry. And we'll put the counter here, and in we go. I wonder if we bother attacking with the 2-1 two, two or not. Because um, it does deal 2 damage to us as well. That's a tricky one. Does it have Vigilance? No. It oh, it has Reach. Jeez. Okay. Whoa. They're going to trade. That's good for us, I think, based on the fact that we're missing land drops. That's really good for us. And I think their hand is pretty pretty well suited to race. I almost attacked into this with this, with this thing. That, that would have been bad. Okay, this also has reach, but it's a 2 2, so that would be, be a trade. Okay, well, we're really glad they traded off because we're, we're starting to have a little bit of variance against us here. Uh, but a land is still going to help us a lot. Land off the top, still going to help us a lot. Okay, unfortunately not. Uh, we probably got one more turn to find a land, and then we're uh, going to be packing it in. Opponent did not find any action, fortunately. Oh, okay. Well, no, they found a good creature. That's actually really bad for us. All right. Well, uh, combat professor or specter. Yeah, I mean, they both block frost tricksters. Neither of them blocks well against the aerialist. I think we'll do the professor. It's likely to die somehow in combat. And uh, I think I'm okay attacking here. I guess this trades for Pledge Mage. Which is not great. Because if they draw a spell... I'm sorry, if they don't draw any spells, they won't be attacking us with this. But if this is down, then they will be able to attack us with the Colony. So I actually don't think we want to attack. They're 20. We're not winning this game by racing we're we're winning this game by drawing lands and and being able to survive so um okay no attacks from them is really really nice that's really good okay lorehold pledge mage um trading professor for waterfall aerialist would bug me too much but if they double block with the tricksters then that's not good so i don't think we're attacking we'll go specter the fens pass the turn and again, just, just hoping to draw land. If we rip a mountain off the top, that's going to be real, real, real nice. Okay, that's not, not great for us. Scourge Colony. Going to be getting in there. And I think we're blocking it. Sadly. Oh, but uh, we don't... Well, I guess we put both flyers on it and they get their choice. Yeah. Or we trade for Waterfall Aerialist with the Combat Prop. Interesting. Very low chance of us drawing a mountain here. But if it did happen, we would want to have not traded. I think we want to get rid of this aerialist. Since maybe even just playing... If we don't draw a land, worst case scenario, we just play this Pledge Mage. At least we've got blocks on this later. I think we want to keep the Spectre around since it can gain us life later on in the game. Which is going to matter. Okay, another two drop. Poet. Well, we'll just play the Pledge Mage then. And now we've got, at least got blocks on the colony. This is, a, this is like a very nail bitey game, though. They could find something. It looks like they have. Oh, yeah. That's a great draw. That's a real good draw. All right. Uh, well, we're dead if they attack with everything. Maybe not literally, but essentially, because we have to chump, chump. And, uh, because we can't double block here, right? And then we take too much damage, so. Darn. Well, I mean, sometimes you just don't draw lands, right? What are you going to do? There's one. Uh, so Shield Mage isn't going to do it. Post not going to do it. So on to game three. Back for game three, we've got, um, uh, Two drop, a couple good three drops. We can learn. We can grab sciences to grab uh, to get our third land. 
So we're uh, we're pretty happy with this. Not a super aggressive deck, but uh, or a hand rather, but uh, I think it's got some punch to it. All right, play our land and say go. Opponent plays an island and looks like they've got a one mana card, so we'll keep that in mind. Um, ooh, professor, that's a nice one. Uh, what's the one mana blue spell? Uh, I'm blanking on it right now. Keep that in mind, though. All right, we definitely want sciences because no guarantee we're going to hit land number three, and we do have other ways to learn uh, to get our summonings and all that kind of stuff, so... Um, still no play for them. Okay, well, we could play uh, Arrogant Poet and, and keep the beats going. Let's see what they do when we attack for two here. Nothing. So they don't have an instant blue spell, but they had a single mana... Maybe it's the O2, but I don't know why they wouldn't play that. Uh, let's grab a land. We'll grab a red land that will let us cast everything in our hand. And if we draw another untapped land next turn, uh, we get to Delp Spell, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice. Opponent finds land number three. And they are thinking about what they want to do here. They pass the turn back to us, having done nothing. So they could, this could be burying books. Uh, we did not find land four. So I think we want to attack. If they go burying books, we could play Beaming Defiance, which is at least an interesting option to have. Okay, nothing uh, that can interact with an attacker. So I guess let's go with the Pledge Mage next. Or do we go with Lore Hold Pledge Mage? We can give this one flying pretty easily with Hunt for Specimens next turn, so I think I like putting it into play. And let's see what our opponent wants to do. Land four for the opponent. And Professor of Zoomancy, that's a pretty nice one for them. So a little bit early to be Divine Gambiting. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously we don't... Uh, don't have the, the mana for it anyways. So, if we hunt for specimens, we can give the Pledge Mage flying, which is quite nice. If we study break, we get to hit them for five. But doesn't really get us anywhere. If we, um, if we lore hold Pledge Mage, we don't get to attack at all, which I don't love. So no, not really any excellent options for us here. And I mean, holding up beaming, beaming Defiance, like if we just attack with Pledge Mage, they block with the Pest. We don't want to use Defiance there. So uh, I would like to keep attacking. So I'm going to uh, gonna give this Flying, make a 1-1. One, one, and let's grab Inkling Summoning so that we have a steady stream of spells that can uh, continue to give this thing Flying for us. All right, opponent playing multiple choice. This is pretty scary. We get to return a creature to our hand. Um, well, if we bounce Professor, we get to learn again, which is cute, but not amazing. So we're pretty strapped on, on mana uh, again. They're getting a 4-4. Four, four. Um, it's pretty tough. This is pretty tough. I guess we'll pull it back. I mean, otherwise we're just our pest is just dying for no value. The only nice thing about having the two one around is that we could attack into their four four or try to block it. Um, with uh, having beaming defiance available, but that's still a, a negative exchange for us. The one saving grace of our current situation is our opponent's at thirteen and we're at twenty two. So we, we can apply the pressure. We'll take four here. Okay, land four. That's nice. That is nice. Um, so we could study break them. Swing in, play poet. Better do uh, study break them on their turn, of course. We do want to keep getting damage in with the 3-1. This is a tricky little spot. Um, 
I think the play is Arrogant Poet Hold Up Study Break. That gives us two creatures with flying next turn. Saves us eight damage this turn. We're, yeah, we're not, not loving our spot here, for sure. So when Punk goes to attacks, we will uh, tap down their dudes. They drew a ton of cards there, but again, we've got uh, we've got at least we're ahead on life, we're ahead on board, and we're hitting them for five damage this turn. Divine Gamut still not castable, not going to be great here. Okay, they go to discard. That's funny. Ah, uh, man, still can't hit lands, unfortunately. Alrighty, so we're going to play, uh, yeah, we'll play Inkling Summoning, give our Pledge Mage Flying, and potentially have le uh, Lethal, whoa, not Lifelink, Flying, uh, Lethal next turn, put them to eight, we'll take action, and we actually have seven, plus we can cast another Inkling Summoning, uh, or we just cast Beaming Defiance, and, and that would actually be lethal at that point. Um, so depending on what they show us here, they obviously don't know that we have Defiance. We could go for it next turn. We've got a Pest on Chump duty. Oh. Okay, so that plan is a little bit out the window. Still not in horrible shape, though. Um, in for four. I think we block here. Take the take. This is a five-life gain, essentially. We'll take it while we can get it. Interesting that he did not come in with the Professor as well. Ooh. Is this lethal? It's one short. Turbo player draws a card. Turbo player sacks a creature. Two or less. <laughs> Target creature only. Yeah. Okay, so that's not going to work. Ah, uh, boy. Well, we could play Prof. We could play Inkling Summoning. We could play Silver Cool Command. That's kind of it. Uh, I guess we play Laurel uh, Pledge Mage as well. I guess let's see what happens when we attack. That's step one. Okay, so now this command could potentially kill them next turn. Uh, if we play Prof, we can't hold up Defiance, which is a little bit awkward. So I think we just play Pledge Mage. Or maybe we just play Inkling Summoning. They've got three. This could have Lifelink next turn. That's pretty pretty scary. So I guess we want Pledge Mage, because that could block that. And first strike it down before they can get any life. So, so I mean, this this could this could go either way here. This will be the turn that, uh, that der determines it for sure. Let's see what they have. They drew a lot of cards last turn, too. So, this is, uh... Or the turn before last, I should say. Right? Yeah, turn before last. They have two, four... They have six, ten, they have fourteen, so we're not straight up dead to what they have. But, like, a mage duel probably just kills us here, I think. And it's too bad that we couldn't, um... Oh, that's good, too, eh? All right, so... Now they go up to seven. We go to quite a low life total. We just couldn't find the lands we needed this game and last, unfortunately. There's not really nothing to be done about it. It's just, just luck. Snow Day is a really, really good card. There's a land. All right, so we have no blocks that can save us here, right? Or we could play Professor plus Inkling Summoning. 
That lets us block three things, which is not quite enough, because we're at two. Um, we've used sciences, so we have no life gain in the board. Command, does this do it? Target player draws and loses one. So that's five plus one. That's not enough, not quite enough. Beaming defiance is plus two. That's not quite enough. Real close. Really close game. Creature with two or less, and we don't have anything in our yard, yeah. Darn. Snow Day was the perfect uh, card from the have right there, too. So it gets this thing through. I mean, I guess Mage Duel, like I said, would have done the same thing. This doesn't untap or anything, right? That'd be nice if it did. Target opponent sacks a creature. Wouldn't do it either. They just sacked the pest. Right. Well, really close. Um, but no cigar for us this time. All right. We're back for round four. One and two. So we need to uh, we need to pick up some wins here. This looks like a pretty good hand. Got an excellent two drop and an excellent three drop. And we'll go from there. Let's see what we can do. On the draw, which is not great, but... Nothing we can do about that. One plays a swamp. And a hunt for specimens. All right. Decent start. Grabbing intro to prophecy. We'll go shale. They'll attack us for one. We're definitely not going to block. Uh, opponents on four colors here. Pretty interesting. Campus guide. All right. Just a little splashing around here. And they don't uh, opt to find the land. Okay. So if we go regimen... Uh, Shale becomes a 2-2. Two -two. That's pretty good. Doesn't block anything. Uh, or we play Silver Call Apprentice, attack with, with Shale, and uh, and make this a 3-3, three -three, which is pretty sweet because um, it blocks really well from there. But uh, I, I guess we just want to get Sparring Regimen into play and probably find Environmental Sciences so that we can... Um, you know, find our splash color and, and all that. It's going to be a little bit awkward next turn, though, because we won't be able to cast Sciences, find a Mountain, and cast Apprentice. But there's a chance that uh, we draw a, a land naturally, which would be quite nice, and then we'd be okay. So we'll see what happens here. Opponent's going to come in for at least two. If I were them, I would get in with the pest. I, I don't. Uh, there's like no chance that we're blocking with the two two. It's way too good of a card. Demogoth Woe Eater, sacrifice a creature. Yeah, that's good. So they get to sack their pest to it. We have study break for that though. Okay, we drew our mountain naturally. That's pretty cool. So let's play. I guess Silver Quill Apprentice and hold of study break. Or we just play Spectre of the Fens and take a hit for seven and not worry about it. Hmm. Interesting. I guess we'll do study break. I'm not I'm not really sure how this is gonna pan out in a way that any play is particularly better than the other, because Study Break's always going to gain us, you know, nine life or whatever. Um, Alright, so in response, okay, we we should have had full control on, I guess. We could have, uh, we could have tapped this to give this a 1-1 one -one counter in response of the uh, Sparring Regimen, but I uh, did not have full control on. Okay, 
pass the turn back. We're not going to science this turn. We're going to study break. Um, they're going to sack their pest. Very good. Very good. Okay, opponent moves to attacks. Let's cast study break. And uh, let's grab, hmm, yeah, I guess Inkling Summoning. Just keep having creatures to put into play. It's good with Shale. Professor of Zoomancy. It's a good card. That is a good card. All right. Well, let's swing with both of our creatures. If they block with the zoo, we can uh, kill it with Defiance. And then go get uh, go get a land. I guess we'll go get a land first. Yeah. Since we'll get a buff off of it. I uh, should have got a black probably. Okay, so if they block, we go defiance. If they don't block, we go summoning. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good for pretty good for us. Um, and who do we want to put the counter on? Putting on the Prentice encourages them to block it, but I think it's probably better to put it on the Flyer. They may chump at the Pest here. I mean, we may not even mind trading for the Prof, actually. Spend our mana on the Summoning. Hmm, we'll have to see what they do. Okay, our opponent has opted to block here. Uh, I think we're going to take the trade and play the summoning, because that way we get uh, the shale trigger onto the summoning. They're going to 11. Uh, then we've got a 3 power, a 5 power, so that's 8, plus 1, plus 2 more, or plus you know a bunch more lower hold command. So I think we're okay with the trade here. Go ahead and summon and uh, activate. Unfortunately, we don't get to do the in-response trick, but um, I think it's still worth it to uh, do this. We're going to take a hit for nine, which is not ideal. But it puts us in a spot to potentially win next turn, so that that is ideal. I, miss, I miscalculated this. This would be uh, so seven, eight, so we would need to lower hold command in order to win it. Yeah. Okay, so the opponent uh, prophecies, prophesizes. In with both. And uh, we're going to take the damage here. Looks like they've still got something to do with their mana, so I'm not sure how we're going to proceed. I think we attack. And, uh, man, they could have negate. That could be bad. My feeling is we don't go for it this turn. Just buff the inkling. It's gonna, well, both our creatures will be untapped. We can play, um, we have six mana, we can play Spectre Defense and hold up Defiance. I think that's the safest play. they definitely got something going on with their mana here. Could be a flunk. And uh, let's pass the turn back. So definitely a window to win there, but um, if they have a counter spell or something, we're... Oh, okay, they've got 10 the pests. Very clever. Well, that's actually really bad for us. So they get seven one ones. That's scary. Okay, well, let's see what they can do with them. I did not think of that as a potential uh, card that they would have. Are they 
could have like pump your team with uh, the the white uh, instant. I was more worried about them having removal or uh, a uh, a counter spell to our lore hold command and then smacking us back. Okay, they're gonna learn. They're gonna grab something. Let's see what it is. They grab annihilation. They do not have the mana for that. Let's see what else they've got here. Cram session to gain four life is pretty good. We still have lethal in the air though. Grabbing another copy of annihilation. We have a mage duel here as well. We do. We've got the defiance. And that should lock it up. In with everything. We'll block here. We'll take seven. And uh, that should lock it up. All right, we'll be back for round five, I think. Back for round five. Unfortunate draw here. We don't have a two drop. And, uh, you know, we've only got two lands. We've got one card we can cast. I think this is a mulligan because we would... Ideally, we need to find a planes plus. And, I mean, even just finding one planes is somewhat unlikely with, you know, only nine sources in... in uh, uh, you know, uh, 33 cards left in the deck over three, uh, two draw steps, I guess, total we would get before we have to cast something. So I think we're going to mulligan. It feels a bit close, but this hand's actually a lot better. It looks worse, but we've got Hunt, which gets us our um, uh, environmental sciences, which is super important. I think we put back Lorehold command as we may need to get white and then we may not have a way to cast this or we just put back the shield mage as it's just kind of the worst card here um that's pretty tough just that if we if we do get the planes we're never casting this so i think i'm going to put the command back uh, of course we could just draw the planes as well but um again feels close i'm not a not a mathematics uh expert or anything but i think we're we're getting the planes here, and uh, and that's going to put us in a spot where Warhold Command is not really happening. All right, well, looks like we were right, I guess, to do what we did. It's a little bit of a, little bit of a slow start. Hope to see another land here so that we can get going with uh, Spectre of the Fens. And passes it back. Eh, not great. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and attack for one. And play Arrogant Poet, I guess, and go from there. Study Break not really giving us any value right now. It's funny, we like a bunch of these games, having a second Sciences in the board would have saved us from some of these, these mana light draws that we've been having. I don't know if that means that we should be including it or not, but. Uh, it's uh, certainly certainly worth noting. All right, Umber Juke for the opponent. That's pretty good. They get in for three here. And, uh, yeah, just hoping to see a land, play Spectre of the Fens. That should uh, shore some stuff up for us. Not going to not gonna be in the cards, as it were. No unwilling ingredient attack is pretty interesting. Uh, so do we want to attack with Poet and make both players... Essentially, both players lose two life, right? I feel like we do. We're not sure what their second color is either, are we? So, I don't know who benefits from... Maybe we don't benefit from this attack because we're behind on board now and on mana and everything, so maybe we do leave this back. And we don't want them to, to block with the ingredients, so let's just get in with the pest... They're going to trade. I don't hate that. I guess they get to draw a card now. We gain a life. 
Maybe, we, yeah, maybe we weren't, weren't supposed to do any of that. Um, study break. Uh, might do something for us here. I think we're just casting it because we got nothing else to do. We might as well draw a summoning. Tap our own guy as well in case they've got some kind of uh, hexproof spell. I don't think they can with, with black, but some good habit to get into because if they do have hexproof, then um, you don't get to learn. But if they hexproof this and we target it our own, then we do get to learn anyways, which is good. Okay, we got our Inkling Summoning. Our opponent looks to be a little bit uh, tight on mana as well. Uh, so let's get the Spectre of the Fens into play. That should slow them down. Uh, we don't need to pay two life. I'm wondering if we should be playing 18 lands in this deck with uh, having Rise of Extus. The Mage Hunter's Onslaught is quite good. But we're now ahead on life, which is pretty sweet. Oh, combat for us. That's so good to see. Welcome to the party. Decline. All right. And still nothing to get back with command, but... Yeah, okay, so they've been hurting on mana. I mean, as have we. come back to the battlefield it does might be worth making the trade here with the 2-1 if they want to take it I think so see if they take it they may not Could have put the power bump on the professor. That might have been slightly more correct, because there's a very low chance they're blocking the professor, unless they have something like professor's warning or something like that. And shield mage should be pretty good here. Ooh, that's a nice one. So is that. Okay, do we have lethal two, three, four, five, six? Uh, technically, we do. With the command and beaming defiance, actually. So they have to have... I don't think there's a single black mana spell that can get, can get them out of this. So I'm going to go... Uh, target opponent sacks. Target gives you plus three, plus three. And then we can beam me defiance for the last point. We could also make them draw one, but I don't know, maybe something goes wrong. With this... All right, and maybe we should be targeting our, our ward uh, guy with our pump spell so that they have to uh, pay three life if they wanted to uh, interrupt that, but I don't think there's anything they could have had there. We're back. It's round six. I uh, love this hand. We got a good curve here. We'll probably start with Shale and kind of go from there. I was wondering if there's ever a reason why you'd want to hold out for this 4-4 four, four guy. kills any, any X1 creature. I guess it starts to pump up our combat professor or something, but the, I feel like this gets us more more value and more quickly and starts attacking them right away. We're going to kill it with uh, Lash of Malice or something? No. Okay, nice. Well, that's lucky. Apprentice Poet. I think we want to go with Poet here since we're going combat professor next turn. Alright, and uh, looking okay here. Nice to be on the play always in best of one. Okay, opponent puts a trudge into play. Not super meaningful right now, but of course this can come back later, so we need to keep that in mind. Uh, so we do have the option to go Silver Coal Apprentice, Hunt for Specimens... Uh, pump shale 
and then pump both of these with shale after, which is pretty cute. And certainly adds a lot of power to the board. Next turn, they can just block something. So it doesn't, it's not super meaningful to do that, but it is cool. Um, I think we'll go combat for us. If we draw the land, we can go hunt and then get inkling summoning and do that. And it'll kind of be the same thing. So I'm gonna, gonna go for this. I'm going to put the counter on the shale. Hmm. Or we put it on the poet and see if they want to. See if they want to block with Dina. I'd be okay with them blocking with Dina. This will incentivize them to do that. I'm going to decline. I don't think they will because they just lose her for nothing, but. I guess give it, give them the, uh, give them the opportunity to, make them want to if they, if they're thinking about it. <laughs> All right, opponent finds removal for shale. It's a bummer, but we've gotten some good value out of her already, and. Uh, we will move to the next uh, phase of the game here, which is going to be trying to kill them with flyers. Trudge is going to get through. We are definitely not going to trade. They're going to leave it back. Okay. We'll just pay two life then and give this flying. It's better than taking four. Uh, campus. Okay, so we'll go apprentice and hunt. Gonna put the uh, apprentice trigger on the poet in case they've got flunk or something for combat professor. Don't want to lose out on that point of damage. And we've got an option of environmental sciences or inkling summoning. I think at this point in the game we're pressuring them pretty well. We'll just take the summoning, even though we would like another, um, another land. Uh, I think I'll still put it here. If they do have instant speed removal, I would prefer the professor to not die. So I'd like to incentivize them to kill the poet. We'll pay the two life, of course. Okay, so probably don't have flunk then. So we'll see what they do have. Master Symmetrist. Okay, that's pretty annoying, actually, because it does have reach. Oof. That's a beating. Uh, does that do it? I think that does it. We get a apprentice trigger, and we're gonna get a combat professor trigger as well. Yep. Yep. And our opponent sees that. All right, we'll be back. Okay, I've decided I'm actually gonna add a another land into the deck with all our six drops and, and five drops and stuff. It just feels like we really are on the edge of not drawing enough lands. I'm going to cut divine gambit, uh, because we do have double rise of Exodus. Uh, this could be wrong, but, um, that's, that's what feels like the best cut to me at this current moment. It could be beaming defiance as well, but, uh, I do like having a little bit of inter instant speed interaction. So, uh, that's what we're going to do. All right, we're back. With an 18th land. Let's see if we uh, get flooded this game. Knock on wood. All right. Great hand. We got a two drop into Sparring Regiment. Love it. When it starts with a, an adventurous impulse. Revealing Rutha. Okay. Got some teamer action going on over there. Let's see if we can compete with it. No two drop is always nice on the opponent's side. Not on ours. Always want a two drop. And let's see what they've got here. Scourge Colony would be pretty good. Blue Source Augmenter Pugilist. That's also pretty good. We don't have removal. So I would be okay with the trade here. I'm going to play Sparring Regimen. And uh, what are we going to grab? Probably Sciences. Feels like we just always want 
Science. I mean, we do have our fourth land for Spectre. So maybe we don't need it. Um, but like we're eventually going to want to grab extra lands and stuff. Hmm. I I don't know. This is tough. All right, we'll take summoning. I I I, I have a feeling I may come to regret that. I'm not going to give this flying. Uh, if they trade then uh, that's okay because we've got Silver Quill Command. We'll get it back later. And pretty unlikely that they block anyways. Their creature is slightly more valuable. They're going to fight. That's real good. Yep. All right, well, now we can command them, make them sack that thing, and get our guy back. And I do like that. Although they also have Rutha. Hmm. What's our what is our other option? Play Spectre of the Thens and take another hit for three next turn. Which I don't like very much. So yeah, I think this is the right play. Plus that thing will be an eight eight eventually, so good to get rid of it now. I don't think this game's gonna be over super quickly. Rutha for the opponents. Study break in hand for us is pretty cool. So we can go Shield Mage, we can go Shale into Inkling Summoning, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think that's the way we want to go, because then we can start getting value from Shale. Or we just play Alan Shield Mage, and maybe we just play Embros at some point as a bigger play that can start growing stuff. Kind of feels like all these ideas are okay. I guess we'll spend all of our mana. So it should be either Shale Summoning or Shield Mage. Um, and then maybe Embros next turn plus something else. All right, let's go Shield Mage. Having trouble making a decision there. We'll give this flying so that we make sure that it gets through. And we've got a nice little clock going in the air here. Okay, opponent uh, didn't hit a land drop and passed the turn back to us. And we've got some options here. Well, I think we just go with... Well, we either go with Embros or Spectre of the Fens, I guess. We could play Shale plus Spectre of the Fens as well. That's kind of an interesting combination. Puts more pressure on them in the air, which I like. I guess let's see what they do first when we attack. Pay some life. I guess if they got debate, they get to take care of our shield mage. But otherwise, if they've got barian books, they're gonna have to take damage. Arcane sub, okay. Not too concerning. Intro to annihilation, okay. Pop, pop, and they're just gonna scoop it up. Okay, right on. Back for round eight. We go first. We got a two drop. We've got a three drop that we like. Dig this hand. And we will be grabbing uh, summoning here as we've already got a couple lands. Shouldn't be too tough to get to six. Thanks for that. That's pretty good. All right, well, uh, I guess we go sparring regimen. And now we could grab summoning as a way to uh, to find our splash color, but again, I just don't feel like we're going to need it uh, right now. Let's see if they want to block here. Pretty tough. So if they attack us back, uh, yeah, that's that's real good. Um, I think we block. 
Otherwise, they're just, they have a repeatable way to get, get value out of this blood researcher. But if we, if we don't block, we get to hit them back at a counter with sparring regiment. I think we just block, though. We, we're not really interested in racing this thing. It's uh, definitely awkward. Uh, here we'll just play summoning. And then next turn, we can go summoning plus humiliate and sort of start to rebuild our air force. Or build our air force. We never had one. Take three here. Time for specimens. So this blood researcher is a little concerning. Hopefully we'll be uh, getting to six mana for rise. Humiliates should be pretty nice for us next turn. If they do get a sweet lesson here, we can we can nab it if they have uh, something really good. Um, otherwise, we can, uh, can nab that. Intro to Annihilation. I don't know if we care to nab that, but... Let's see what's happening over here. Interesting. Okay. Infuse the Vitality. Gains Death Touch when it dies, and you gain two life. So, they need a land... I don't know that we mind too much if they intro us. If they play Spectre next turn, we'll be able to attack through it. So I think we... Do we just take Harmonize? That can't be right, because if they spend their entire next turn playing Harmonize, that's pretty good for us. I'm inclined to just take Spectre. Yeah, if they go harmonize next turn and don't have another spell, we, we're putting them to 10. We've got... Uh, just give death touch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no blocks. Oh, I guess they can annihilate our regimen. That's fair. I mean, we're still feeling pretty good, though. All right, so now we have a choice. Um between rise on the blood researcher or we just add two more things to the board. I think we just add two more things to the board. Put them in a spot where they're pretty pretty up against it here. Now we've got uh, exactly 10 power in the air. They need to gain some life, which they can do. They can gain two off of the death touch spell. But uh, we can we have a specter activation. Okay, they have a specter. Uh, we have a rise for that. And then that's uh, that's going to do it. Yeah, I was thinking they could cast uh, their death touch spell, but they cannot. We'll grab sciences in case something goes horribly awry. And we need to gain some life, but I think we're. We're all there. We're all buttoned up here. Yeah. All right, back for the finals. Here we are. We go first. Uh, two drop, three drop. A uh, little awkward. Uh, we don't have the uh, the mana to cast it, but we can get sciences. It's it's an awkward hand, but we'll keep it on the play. So mulliganing is even more punishing. And uh, we will go ahead and get sciences here because otherwise we. Well, that's 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 interesting. Um, this is our only chance to get our red mana at the moment. But, I mean, if we do get summoning, we get to put into play. We have a chance to draw a white, play, play Pledge Mage. We have a chance to draw, um, you know, just get to, you know, Shield Mage naturally. Maybe we don't need to do this. Opponent's on Forest. Because if we grab the mountain here, if we grab the, the sciences here, next turn we grab mountain. <clears throat> we're not doing anything. We're not increasing our clock. 
I actually think I'm, now I'm actually talking to myself and getting summoning here, but maybe we're gonna be crying later because we didn't get our red. Could be, could be the case. Oh uh, yeah, like shale a good amount. Should we just play that now? Probably waste the mana, unfortunately. Don't love the idea of playing off curve for the rest of the game. But, or, or I mean, or neck, or, you know what? No, I think we go summoning. Next turn, we go uh, Embrith, because we don't have Embros, sorry, because we don't have uh, a four drop play. So that's what we'll do. So there you go. Flexibility. Flexibility is nice. Cool. Okay, we find our, our planes after all. We'll still just put this guy into play. Swing in for two. And next turn we've got Shield Mage. We can nuke their 1-1 one, one if it's still a 1-1. One, one, which is useful. Or we just attack them for four, potentially. Not bad either way. Not bad either way. The opponent goes for Mentor's Guidance, which copies. So, nice little... Nice little turn for them, just drawing cards, but nice for us that doesn't look like they're going to add anything to their board. So I imagine they're looking for land drops. Uh, I think we're just going to attack them for four rather than shoot their 1-1. One, one. They might just chump anyways. They might just take the damage, which we kind of dig. So we're following it up with a shield mage. And, you know, now a land off the top's great. Uh, that should put us in a great spot. We can learn, uh, get sciences, get the mountain, cast lore hold command the turn after that. I like it. Let's see what they got here. Pop quiz. Not what you want in this situation. Unfortunately. Really need a land over there. Okay, they got one. Fighting. Okay, this is this is good. This is working. They they lose three, which is good for us, but we lose our guy. Alright, still in it. Well, I don't love using Rise on a Mathematician. We get in for three, they're down to five. I mean, the command is gonna kill them next turn, so I think it is worth it. Um, even though this is kind of silly, but I mean, the elemental summoning next turn for them is not gonna matter. So we grab this and jam with everything. They pretty much have to chump the 4-4. Four, four. Okay, they have um, they have the uh, gain two life plus two plus two. Okay, but they're still gonna do that. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind that they have that. They play a land, they play um, Summoning Leading of a Forest. Okay, Frost Trixer, okay. Tap our 4-4. Four, four. And Kelpie Guide. Okay, so then we've got them. We've got them, right? Sciences gets the land. Put it into play. This shoots the Trickster. Creatures you control got plus 1, plus 0, and indestructible. That doesn't kill them. Okay, is there another way of doing this? Her opponent sacks. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily kill them. It puts them to... It kills both of their creatures. And puts them to... Three. So Silver Coral Command should take it from there. This doesn't obviously 
deal any target, right? Okay, but they do have two life gain as well. Hmm. Well, I think it's still our only play that makes sense right now. Um. Unless we have a, a creature to get back, we do not. Uh, maybe we make a 3-2, though. I think we were supposed to make a 3-2 here. Yeah. Rather than shooting something, because then this still causes them to lose all their creatures, and um, we have more stuff. So, Okay, so, I mean, they're not technically dead there, but uh, they're dead. Nice! All right, well, there you go. We, uh, we did it. Got the trophy, and uh, great draft. Great, great, great draft. All right. So, uh, pretty lucky draft on our side. We did open some really good rares. We found the open lane that nobody else was drafting, uh, but we were able to do that by reading signals in pack one, so hopefully that is a good uh, demonstration of how I do that. Uh, not every draft is going to go this way. I had a draft earlier today where I just went one and three, and sometimes there's just nothing you could do. Obviously, our losses were to uh, not drawing enough lands, so maybe we were supposed to be running 18 from the get-go. We ended up switching to that. Um, sometimes you're just going to run into bad luck, right? So it doesn't always you know, go quite this smoothly, but uh, hopefully there's some good stuff in this video for you. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash music. And uh, you can join the Discord. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to pop by and ask for any advice on your drafts or uh, send me a draft log. I'd be happy to have a look at it for you. Uh, thanks again for lis uh, listening. Thanks again for watching. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.